My name's Tracy Voss, and the name of my organization is Tracy's Dogs, and we're based here in San Antonio, Texas. We rescue dogs from high kill shelters in the state of Texas, all the way down to the border of Mexico, and any dog that has a pending euthanasia date, that has a wagging tail and a friendly smile and um, a good personality, we will rescue and bring to our rescue here. Uh, in San Antonio and rehabilitate them and find them homes. Well, we, we, there was a gal that used to live here in San Antonio that moved to Denver. And she goes, Tracy, this is the best place in the world for dogs. She goes, San Antonio, why are you even marketing them there? Bring them out here. And then Scott talked to her and we're like, hey, yeah, we'll bring you some dogs, and so we, we probably talked. We probably brought what eight or nine total. Yeah, it, it was a was small. A lot, it was man. a small load. Yeah, and we thought, you know what? So we left. Pick, we pack left them up. one. Gosh, we got there at eight or nine in the morning. We were exhausted. We drove straight through and then dropped the dogs off and went to sleep and woke up the next morning on Sunday and found they had and they had knocked all the dogs in. Yeah, they, they got, were all done. We handed them over to a rescue group that um, just holds an adoption event, and they had people lined up for the dogs. And I mean, it, it blew us away because here, the same, those same dogs, if you put those dogs at an adoption event or um, put them online to be adopted out locally, you will not get one call, not one. But if you put that same dog in Denver, Colorado, you'll have a waiting list or you know five or six people with applications that want that dog, but here, nothing. And I just, it's so sad because these dogs, every one of them here that I see, I know I can find that little dog a home somewhere. Um, if it's, cause it's not gonna happen here. We're just- well, and On the drive home back from yeah. Denver to San Antonio, we kind of spent some time talking about what had just happened and didn't really even anticipate that would ever occur. Mm -hmm. And on the way home, I said, you know, I, I think we can, I think we can do this. We don't have to just drop dogs yeah. off anywhere and, and then head home. Yeah. That's and that's where we started. We, we, as soon as we got home, we went and contacted PetSmart and got our, our partnership number. number, and that gave us the ability to do adoption events at any PetSmart across the country. And, mm -hmm. and so we decided that we were going to do that, and we did our next event up in Denver. And yeah. did, How many did we bring? Um, we probably only did 15, and we thought back then that it was, was a ginormous <laughs> number. Yeah. And in hindsight, it actually uh, it, it looks kind of measly. It's puny way. because we weren't doing online adoptions. What we were doing yeah. is just bringing the dogs to an event and praying that there were some wonderful Colorado people there that wanted a Texas death row dog. And from the business side, that's a little unnerving because yeah. those uh, those transports, even the small transports in a van, were costing us twenty yeah. five hundred dollars a piece. Yeah. And I wanted to make sure that we had covered our costs before we we left. Mm -hmm. And that's really how we started getting into adoptions online and finding families before we even leave San Antonio because yeah, those adoption fees would come in, and they would all breathe a sigh of relief and know, oh, okay, we got our costs covered. At least we can yeah. we can make this trip. And, then it just it absolutely ballooned from there. Okay, so we had a bunch of border dogs come in the other day, and Scott and I had this big powwow a couple weeks ago, and he's the numbers guy. He puts together, here's what you can take, here's how many you can take from the border, because all the border dogs are not vetted. They come up unspayed and unneutered, and only with one round of shots. So he gave me a number, and he said, now you can stick to that, right? And I said, yeah, I can, I can do it. And then he said, you could take so many from the city of San Antonio. The city of San Antonio, dogs are fully vetted, so they don't cost anything because they're already spayed or neutered. So I got a list of all the border dogs that were on the euthanasia list. And one was just as cute as the other. And it was one of those lists that said, these are out of time and they don't they don't mess around down there so if they say they're out of time and nobody picks them those dogs are gonna be dead the next day so I, I took double what he told me I could take and I just decided not to say anything to see if he would figure it out well he gets back from Minnesota and I've got this huge stack of paperwork because he also deals with all the paperwork 
and I called all my friends. I'm trying to get all these dogs into foster care before he figures this out. <laughs> so, like, listen, you gotta take these puppies, or you gotta take this mama and babies, or you gotta take this one. Well, I got us, I got some of them in foster care, but certainly not the number I needed to. So he put all the dogs in the um, system, and I get a text. <laughs> And it basically just calculates exactly what I took, how many males, how many females from uh, the border, from ACS, and huge question marks. And I just said, well, you know, my friend out in Colorado said she already knew people that were looking for these, and, you know, I played it off that way. So he's, he's, he's being okay, but he's not happy. <laughs> so, but anyway, I mean, if I don't take them, what's gonna happen? They're gonna so, die. So how many, how many dogs are you supposed to get and how many dogs did you end up getting? And kind of look at the camera when you give the two numbers. Okay. Okay, so I was only supposed to take in a total of 30 dogs from the border between now and the end of the year. I took in 50. <laughs> and now animal care service dogs, I'm still working on. That's what we're going to go to the city pound today. I'm I don't remember him. I don't remember all of these guys. I do. In fact, I remember very few of them after I dropped them off. What picture of him? Oh. I gotta get up. Oh. We have volunteers coming tomorrow, and then I have people that also want um, want to foster some of the dogs, but some of them are not feeling well. So I'm trying to. Well, we've got a we've got some sick ones here. So some of them that are sick, these people want to foster. So I've got to let everybody know what's going on. And then Dr. Bowman is supposed to be here in the morning. No, not in the morning. She said around three tomorrow. So she'll look the dogs over and let us know, you know, what's going on. Yeah, it's you know the dog the big dog. I've always had a thing for big dogs. They've always been. Um, more my style, the two dogs that I have personally is about 120 pound Rottweiler male, and I've got a 75 pound female lab pit bull mix. I just seem to have a connection with the bigger dogs different than, than I do with small ones. Um, but it does come with some issues, and they do get in disagreements on occasion, and some of them can escalate pretty quickly. So it's, I think, it's been my experience again. I'm not a dog trainer, but I've spent three years doing this stuff now. And, and it's my experience that the dogs need to know they are not the pack leader. And once they get that understanding and they're comfortable with it, everything else seems to be uh, much better. The times that I have problems with the large dogs, it's almost always, and I can't think of a time that I went out by myself with the big dogs and they had a skirmish. It's always when somebody else is by, either back there by themselves or if I'm with them. It's almost as if the larger dogs think, hey, there's a substitute teacher here. We can kind of act up a little bit and then it can escalate. But I've never had the problem by myself with dogs um, because I think they understand that the way it's set up, that I'm the one in charge and they're very comfortable with that. Okay. This is my 2003 Ford Explorer Sport and it used to be in mint condition and that wasn't until we started doing dog rescue. I had a dog try to get out the back window and busted up the latches and I haven't had a chance yet to repair this but this is my dog transport vehicle and we just usually put crates in here when we're going down to do spay and neuters I can get four small crates in here and usually one up in the front and my favorite part this is my favorite story. This window, I'm, I have stock in duct tape. We had a lab in here one day, had a big cone on. We had just done uh, neuter surgery on him. First no, of I, all, I told you, you need a new vehicle, but what is the point of getting it 
if all he's going to do is transport dogs back and forth, they've ruined your current vehicle. I mean, it's trash. It's gone. The vehicle truck's looks, totally trash. It's, it's it's embarrassing. So I load up. I loaded up a dog and a few puppies one time from the <laughs> house, and I brought it over to the vet. Mm -hmm. And Cassidy works there. She used to. She used to work there. And so I, I come into the vet and I leave the car on because it's hot. I leave the air conditioning on and I'm <laughs> bringing the puppies and I go into the vet and he's examining this dog for 20 minutes. So I said, give me like a second. So I sneak out and I come back in and I saw Cassidy there and I said, just keep an eye on my car because I left it running out here and I just want to make sure nobody steals it. And she looks at me and she said, that's not the kind of vehicle that gets jacked out here. <laughs> And I was thinking, I don't know if I should feel relieved or insulted. I'm like, yeah, it's totally the kind of car that would get yeah. jacked out here. If there's just no point in buying a new but one, but it wouldn't because get jacked. It's, he has had dogs um, literally have diarrhea all over the back of the. I mean, it's and just busted out windows. Busted out windows. And the dog carpeting is ruined. A, a window with a cone on and jumped out of the car. Why buy a new car? Well, we were not. We weren't moving, by the way. Yeah, but why? Why buy a new car? I kind of like it. It has that smell now. Mm -hmm. Every dog feels comfortable in that car, mm -hmm. in that truck when he gets in. And he had eaten that latch on the inside, tore it right off, pushed the window back out, and somehow got this enormous cone through this window and the rest of his body. We call him Houdini, because I still to this day cannot figure out how he pulled that off. But it's an amazing story. I kind of keep this as a badge of honor. I'm almost reluctant to repair the window, because it reminds me of how uh, how absolutely talented that Labrador Retriever was. Now in a great home, by the way, in Colorado. He's got high energy, and this morning when he came out, he was, he had a little mess in his crate, and then he was just kind of hanging out by himself over on the side of the warehouse, so changing behavior for us is about the first thing. Okay, so it's been a crazy morning. Um, up very, very early, took care of all the dogs. Everybody is uh, got their medications. I did some cleaning over there, but now I have to go to work. So my nine to five job, I have to grab my computer, my appointment book, my phone, my keys, and somehow make it from my door through that pack of dogs, just like this, all the way out to my car. So Scott usually escorts me outside and makes sure nobody jumps on me. Scott, I gotta go. You need to help me get out of here. Alright, alright. Okay. All right. Go. Out. Go. Go. Just don't let him jump on you. Never let him jump on you. But you walk so fast yeah. that I can't Try to get away from him. Here he And Jill actually came in with a tick illness called Ehrlichia, and uh, so we're treating her for that right now. So she'll be good as new in 30 days. It's an easy, to, easy thing to treat for. I know. Mm -hmm. It'd be okay with me, but he'll say Why no. Mm -hmm. He'll say no. I will say no. I think I just said no. <laughs> I said, I one thing I like is just one room, and it's the bathroom. Can't tell you how many times I've come home. I go in the bathroom. Just one mind, sit down, and there's a dog in a crate in the bathroom, six inches from my feet. That's my dog-free zone, yeah, my total dog-free zone. That's where I Sorry, I'm always lunch. keep my real... So we've, we've got this 32-foot box trailer that's air-conditioned and heated, and it's... I mean, it serves the purpose really well. We can get 65 to 70 dogs every time we go in and do an adoption event. The downside is I need a very specific pickup truck to pull it. I need a one ton with dualies in the back because that's the most stable platform to pull one of those trucks. Every month we rent a pickup truck and because we travel such a distance, that rental costs us anywhere from $950 to $1,100. So it makes sense at some point to have our own truck to free up some of that money and move it back into the dog rescue part. It's just, it, it hurts every time you want to rent. Now those dualies also, if we go up to Denver, we'll spend $1,100 in diesel fuel 
to make that trip. So our combined fixed costs on a truck like that are anywhere from $2,100 to $2,400 just to move dogs with a trailer and a pickup truck. This is a good crew. I mean, look at this. This is a rescue environment. And look how well behaved all these guys are. They've been in these crates because we've had volunteers here. We've had our vet here today checking out dogs. So these guys normally for lunch will spend you know, two hours in their crates. We let them eat and then we let them relax. And a lot of times they'll nap in here. But because of volunteer day and all the activity here with different people, we've kept them in longer. So I would bet that they've been in here probably four hours now. Now with a lot of rescues, that's not a big deal. I don't, I'm not comfortable leaving them in here that long, but they're very well behaved, very crate trained and they just can't get, wait to get out and run. I'm anxious to get them out and run as well. So give me a couple of minutes guys and we're gonna turn loose, okay? He is one of the most well behaved, awesome dogs we've ever had here at the rescue. That's Zeus. And, you know, he kind of has the hair of a flat coat retriever, but his body is set up almost more like a standard poodle or something that is really kind of unique. But he is just such a good boy. And he, I believe, came from the city of San Antonio. He was, uh, he was a stray as well. But what a good group.